Hi, okay, we're back today and we're going to take a look at this three uh, body system. We've got two masses on top of a table and we have one hanging over the side. Now we have friction in this case and we have friction both on mass number one and mass number two. There is no friction on mass number three, not because it's not touching the side of the table, but rather because there is no normal force pushing mass number three against the side of the table. In other words, gravity doesn't act sideways. It acts vertically. So let's go ahead and put down our uh, forces on this system first. We'll go with uh, maybe with red. So here we have Fn, M1g. Fn, M2g. We've got Ft1, Ft1. Then this way we have Ft2. Notice I have denoted, because there's two separate ropes, I have denoted this as rope number one, this as rope number two. Okay? Uh, perhaps, I, I forgot to mention, perhaps this would be a good time to pause the video and see if you can calculate the answer and then unpause the video and see if you're, you get the same answer that I do. So, here we have friction and here we have FT2 and here we have M3G okay now those are all the forces please understand that th uh, the vertical forces here and here don't contribute to the direction of the path. Let me draw my path direction here now. And my path direction is going to be like this. Okay, so you could see that, if I pull this down a bit, there you go, you could see that my path is to the right along the top and down for number three. Now I'm going to go ahead and write down summation of the forces for the system because I always do system analysis first to calculate the acceleration. There's no other way to calculate the acceleration. Okay? Uh, and, and, I, and also I can't find the individual tensions without the acceleration. So this is step number one is the system analysis and here is the equation for it. There it is. At summation of the forces is equal to F net but for the system. Now, I want, I want to tell you that these, I'm not going to draw everything because I'll use maybe orange color. I want to show you that this force and this force and this force and this force are all internal forces. In other words, the Oh, actually, there is one force that I forgot to draw on. I just noticed that now, and I'll, I'll draw it on now. I forgot the friction on mass number two. But these tensions, this is a positive, this is a negative. This is a positive, this is a negative. I'm not actually going to put these in the equation because I recognize they're an internal force. Let me go back to red because I did forget this force, the friction force on mass number two. I remembered the friction force on mass number one. Okay, now let's go ahead and write the equation. So we'll start at the left here. Okay, let's start with this one. That's negative force of friction on number one. Then this one's plus and not negative, I can negate that. Then I've got minus friction force on two. That's this one here. Then I've got plus FT2 minus FT2. I can negate, I can ignore those as well because they'll cancel out. Then I've got 
plus M3G. So essentially, the unbalanced forces in the system are friction force number one, friction force number two, and M3G down here. And there they are. Now this is going to equal the entire sum of all the masses multiplied by the acceleration of the whole system. Now, to find acceleration, I can replace the friction uh, variable with its equation, which is equal to mu mg. And I'm also going to rearrange these. I'm, I'm going to put this term first, and then I'll subtract these two, just because I don't like to start with a negative. So I'll go m3 g minus, now force of friction 1 is mu m1 g minus mu m2 g. And I'll divide all that by the total mass and that will equal my acceleration. Now, I can do one more simplification here, and that is, if you'll notice, there is a g term that is common to every term in the numerator. So I can go bracket m3 minus mu m1 minus mu m2 times g all divided by the total mass. And that is my acceleration. Now, now that I have the equation, why don't I go ahead and put these values in to my acceleration and calculate what it's going to be. So M3 is 7 minus 0.28 times m1, which is 3, minus 0.28 times m2, which is 5. And then I can multiply all that by g. And then divide that by 3 plus 5 plus 7. And let me put that through my calculator. So the acceleration I got is 3.1 meters per second squared. Now we got to calculate the tension. OK, so <clears throat> all that's left now is to calculate the two tensions. Now here's the tricky part. If we choose, well, we have to decide which masses we want it to choose to calculate the first tension and the second tension. But I've got, I want to give you a warning in this case. This particular mass here, mass number two, would be a bad one to choose. Why? Because it has FT1 and FT2. So there's two different tensions on the free body diagram of mass number two. That means there's two unknown values. We should not, therefore, attempt to solve this one. This would be a bad choice, because we're not going to be able to solve for two unknowns with one equation. Instead, if we choose mass number one, the only tension is FT1 on that. That's solvable. And likewise, if we choose mass number three, there's only one tension on that, and that's FT2. So therefore, I'm going to choose mass number 1 for FT1 and mass number 3 for FT2. And so now, if, I, if you can kind of see it at the same time, I'm going to draw the free body diagram again for mass number 1. I've got friction going to the left. I've got FT1 going to the right, and I can ignore the vertical forces here. So those are the only forces that I have. 
And now I'm going to do my free body diagram. Well, this is the free body diagram. It's right there. But I'll do summation of the forces now on the individual mass is equal to F net. And I know this direction is positive because of my green path here that I chose. And so now I can say FT1 minus force of friction equals F net. Now, let me expand that and say mu m1g equals m1a. Notice the subscripts that I'm using. Now, if I calculate ft1, I'm going to get m1a plus mu m1g. And that is going to, I can simplify by factoring out m1. I'll get a plus uh, mu g. And since I've already calculated a from before, I can now plug in my values because I now have the equation for F, the first tension force. And my mass number one was three kilograms from up here. So I've got three times acceleration of 3.1 plus mu, which was given to me as 0.28 times 9.8. And now I get a tension force one of, tension force is 17.56 Newtons, and that's FT1. Now, if I go ahead and calculate the free body diagram of number three, here is the drawing again. I have FT2 going up, and I have M3G going down. It's from here. You can see it right there. And so, the summation of the forces is equal to the net force. And I know that down here is positive. So I'll have M3G minus FT2. And that's going to give me M3A as F net. And so now if I'm solving for FT2, I'm simply going to take this term to the other side and I'll take this term to that side and I'll get an answer of M3G minus M3A equals FT2. And now I can factor out M3 and I'll get M3G minus A and I will get FT2 for that. Now that I have the equation, let me put in my values. And if I recall back up here, M3 was 7 kilos. So I'll say 7 times 9.8 minus 3.1. And I'll get the answer of 46.8. Newtons. And that's equal to FT2. So you see, I was able to calculate the two tensions. And also notice that the tension on uh, the second cable is much greater than the first one. Okay? And, and that makes sense because Everything is moving on top of the table. Everything's moving to the right. So obviously, FT2 has to be bigger than FT1. Also, uh, there's an interesting question a student asked me. They said, how do I know the friction force on the second mass is to the left? Well, remember, friction always acts opposite to the direction of motion. And the only possible direction of motion for this system is for the third mass to go down. There's no way the third mass is going to go up. Okay? If there's too much friction 
it just means that nothing is going to move. But since this is a kinetic friction that was given, we know it's in motion. So we know that the third mass must be pulling down hard enough to be with gravity to be moving the top two masses to the right. So that's the end of this question. And uh, we were able to get the acceleration and the tensions on both ropes. Thanks for watching.